Vibhavari Shesha Loka Provesha Nidra Chari Yoto Jiva Vibhavari Shesha Loka Provesha Nidra Chari Yoto Jiva Bolo Hari Hari Mokunda Morari Ramo Krishna Haya Griva Yamuna 
Shivana Kele Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namani Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Picharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachatis Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraya Tato Jaya Mudiraya Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtuki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 12 entitled The Perfect Society, Four Spiritual Classes, beginning this morning from text number 25. <laughs> Ke kara vayo nisvasams tejasusmanam atmavan ansu askrit slash Svasma Puyani Shito Sesam Yatod Bhavam Ke Karo Vayu Nishvasam Tejasusmanam Atmanam Atma Tejasusmanam Atmavan Tejasusmanam Atmavan Apsvaskrit 
Asmatayani 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 Shito Shesham Yatot Babam Shito Shesham Yatot Babam Shito Shesham Yatot Babam Shito Shesham Yatot Babam Kekani Vayos Nisvasam Kekani Vayos Nisvasam Tejasus Manam Atmanam Tejasus Manam Atmanam Abs was crit slash mapuyani, as was mapuyani, she tosh esham yatod babam, she tosh esham yatod babam, kekani vayu yetnis vasams, kekani vayu nis vasams, teja. Teja Susmanam Atmanam Teja Susmanam Atmanam Apsvaskrit Sleshma Puyani Apsvaskrit Sleshma Puyani Shito Shesham Yatot Bhavam Shito Shesham Yatot Bhavam Kekhani Vayo Nisvasam Kekhani Vayo Nisvasam Teja Susmanam Atmanam The rest look also I think they continue because there is no purpose. So they are till the end of the chapter. शरीर के अन्य कठोर अंग 
यथा उद्भव जिससे सभी उत्पन्न गंभीर स्वर्ग से ज्ञानवान व्यक्ति को चाहिए कि वह शरीर के विभिन्न अंगों को उनके मूल स्रोतों से लीन कर दे शरीर के छिद्र आकाश द्वारा उत्पन्न है श्वास की क्रिया वायु से उत्पन्न है शरीर की उष्मा अग्नि द्वारा जनित है और वीर रक्त तथा कफ जल द्वारा उत्पन्न है त्वचा पेशी तथा अस्थि जैसी कठोर वस्तुएं पृथ्वी द्वारा उत्पन्न है इस प्रकार शरीर के सारे अवयव विभिन्न तत्वों द्वारा उत्पन्न होते हैं अतः वह इन सबों को पुनः उन्हीं तत्वों में लीन कर देना चाहिए सर्वसिद्ध होने के लिए आवश्यक है कि मनुष्य को शरीर के विभिन्न तत्वों को तत्वों के मूल स्रोतों को जान ले यह शरीर त्वचा अस्थि पेशी रक्त विजय मूत्र मल पुष्मा श्वास आदि के मेल से बना है और ये सारी वस्तुएं पृथ्वी जल अग्नि वायु तथा आकाश से प्राप्त होती है मनुष्य को इन समस्त शारीरिक अवयवों से पूर्णतया अभिज्ञा होना चाहिए तभी वो स्वरूप सिद्ध या आत्मावान बनता है स्पर्शेत्मी रूपाणी चक्षुसाराजन ज्योतिषा विनीयेपु प्रचेत तत्पश्चात बाणी विषयों को वाक इंद्रिया जीव सहित अग्नि को समर्पित कर दे काल कला कौशल तथा दोनों हाथ इंद्रदेव को दे दे गति करने की शक्ति तथा पाव भगवान विष्णु को दे दे उपस्थ सहित इंद्रिय सुख प्रजापति को सौंप दे बुद्धा को मलुत सर्ग सहित उनके असली स्थान मृत्यु को सौंप दे ध्वनि कंपन समेत श्रवणेन्द्रिय को दिशाओं के अधिपति को दे दे स्पर्श समेत स्पर्शेन्द्रिय वायु को समर्पित कर दे दृष्टि समेत रूप को सूर्य को सौंप दे वरुण देव समेत जीव जल को दे दे तथा दोनों अश्विनी कुमार सहित घृण शक्ति को अर्पित कर, कर दे मनो 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 ृथ्वीनाथ्यक्तिचरा चंद्रदेव में लीन कर दें बुद्धि को सारे विषयों को बुद्धि समेत ब्रह्मा जी में स्थित कर दें विद्या अहंकार को प्रजापति के गुणों के अधीन करता है और मनुष्य को यह सोचने के लिए प्रेरित करता है मैं यह शरीर हूँ और इस शरीर के संबंधी प्रत्येक वस्तु मेरी है उसे भौतिक कार्यकलापाओं समेत मिथ्या अहंकार के अधिपति रुद्र और प्रकृति के गुणों के अधीन कर्म करने वाले देवताओं के विकृत जीव समेत परब्रह्म में लीन कर दें पृथ्वी को जल में जल के सूर्य में ज्योति में जो इस ज्योति को वायु में वायु को आकाश में आकाश को मिथ्या अहंकार में मिथ्या अहंकार को समस्त भौतिक शक्ति में फिर इस महत्व को अप्रकट वायु भौतिक शक्ति प्रधान स्वरूप में तथा इस अप्रकट को परमात्मा में लीन कर दें जब इस तरह सारी भौतिक उपाधियाँ अपने अपने तत्वों में मिल जाए तो जीव अंत तत्व पूर्णतया आध्यात्मिक होता है और पूर्ण में परब्रह्म जैसा इस संसार से वह उसी तरह आकाश ले ले जिस प्रकार कांट के जल जाने पर उस उससे उठने वाली लपटों शांत हो जाती है जब भौतिक शरीर विभिन्न भौतिक तत्वों में लौट आता है तो केवल आध्यात्मिक जीव बच जाता है यही ब्रह्म है और यह पूर्ण में परब्रह्म की तुल्य है इस प्रकार श्री भागवत के सप्तम स्थान के अंतर्गत पूर्ण समान चार अध्यात्मिक शीर्षक बारहवें अध्याय का भक्त तात्पर्य पूर्ण हुआ
Tamarandasya Kyananjana Savakaya Chaksuran Militantina Tasmai Sri Gurve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Sya Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sarvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitamstya He Krishna Karna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sutri Devi Pranamami Hari Pri Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vaivacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vidanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Deve Kauravani Prasadine Nirvisesha Sunyavari Asgatya Prasadari Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Narada Muni is describing to Maharaj Yudhisthira about the different ashrams which are present in the society. And he was particularly, we were hearing about the Vanaprastha ashram and then he went on to describe about how one has to give up the material body. Right, these ashrams are only temporary material designations and ultimately we, are, we have to give up this material body. So just as there's a process of creation, there's an, a process of annihilation or destruction. The material world and the material bodies are subject to these three phases, creation, maintenance and then destruction. So creation was described in very great detail in the second and third chapter several times, two or three times, at least three, maybe three times that the process of creation was described. And now here, Mara, by, by the mercy of Narada Muni, he is describing about how we can get rid of the material body. It was explained by Prabhupada in the purport that we have to understand the nature of this body and where all the different elements and uh, characteristics of this body, where they originate from. 
जब भी हमारे शरीर को बनाने को लगे जब भी समाधि जन इस समाधि की उन काम रहा है ये हम तमाम को कहाँ तक मिल रहा है अपने जानना हो सकता है and then when we understand where everything comes from then we give it back to where it came from we send it back just like false ego false ego comes from rudra so false ego is our identification with this world we're thinking i am this body we're thinking this belongs to me the false ego this sense of false ego keeps us in the material bondage of life we want to give that up if we want to get free of the material body if we want to get back to godhead we have to give up that false ego so it was described the different elements all the different things which we have in this material body it, can, it all breaks down to the five different gross elements the earth, water, fire, air, ether. Krishna describes it, the elements of the material creation. So Narada Muni describes how all these different things in our body, the blood and bones and the mucus and the semen and all of these different things which are in our body, the, the fire and the liquid, they all originate from these different five elements. The holes in the body, different gates in our material body, just like the mouth and the nose and the eyes and the anus, these places, these are all holes or gates in the body. So these are said to originate from the ether. And within the body, there's a mechanism for breathing that we have to breathe. We want to be able to breathe. And it gives us life, breathing, and that breath that is, comes from the air. And then heat in the body is also required. When the body becomes very cold, then it's a dead body. There's no heat in the dead body. If there's too much heat, that's also not very good, right? It means a lot of passion, a lot of anger it can be released too much heat in the body. And not enough heat, also a problem. So, that uh, medical science is to keep the body healthy, to keep the body in the proper condition, a balance of all these different elements. Ayurveda teaches three elements, kap, pita and vayu, mucus, bile and air. Mucus, bile and air, kapa, pita and vayu. So when there's an imbalance of these things, then we get sick. 
चिंता को अगर सही मात्रा में भाई ने बने गड़बड़ी की बात नहीं मानी है Ayurvedic system is very similar to the Chinese traditional medicine system. But uh, this this mucus bile and air this can also be broken down further. Can go back still further. The original cause of the mucus bile and air is from the five elements of material creation. And then uh, there's so there's heat in the body. Then there's solid. There's water in the body. Different water, forms of water, blood and mucus and semen. These things. This is all coming from water. Trans different transformations of water. And then the solid things in the body, the bones and the flesh, and the, this is coming from originally from air, transformations of air. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Aham sarvasya prabhavo matha sarvam prabhartate ti madva bhajanti mam buddha bhava samanvita. Krishna is saying, I am the source of everything material and spiritual. The wise who know this worship me with love. Prabhavan Anujagi, Sakuj bhauti ara dhyati dhubai, Sakuj mai vata ayabho. So everything is ultimately coming from Krishna. These different elements in the material creation are Krishna's energy. Krishna says that it's his separated material energy, Bina Astada. Right? It, it's not that, not something which Krishna takes a great pleasure in. Separated energy. Prabhupada gave the example, he said, just like the milk from the cow, it's like the separated energy of the cow. Or someone, we may record someone's voice, so you have the, the recording of their voice in some uh, electronic device. And so this is the separated energy of the speaker. And Man may have a wife, but he may be separated from her. So the relationship is not so intimate. So this material energy, this is Krishna's separated energy. It is not something which Krishna is very fond of. But he's arranged this whole material creation because we desire to be here, we desire to be separate from him. We come into this material world out of our own choice. It's not that Krishna forces us, but we choose to come here. And the bodies which we have are given to us according to our desires and qualifications. Uh, 
And our situation in this material world is also the result of our own activities and our own consciousness. Nothing is happening by chance. And Krishna is not responsible, we are ourselves responsible. So the, the system of Varnashram, the different ashrams in particular, they are there to provide a means for the living entity to get free from his entanglement in this material world. The cause of our entanglement is our desires, and because of our desires we've been given this material body. We have to purify that desire. And we want to give up that mate this material body. So, in the Vedas, they describe this process, how we can become free from this material world. And it involves giving up each of these different elements in the material body. Recognizing nothing is actually ours. The body which has been given to us doesn't belong to us, it belongs to Krishna. And the different, the different powers which we have to perform activities, we may be very creative, we may be very skillful in doing different activity, it is also given to us by the grace of different beings who work on behalf of the Supreme Lord Krishna. There was one devotee in Prabhupada's time, there was one devotee, he was a very good speaker. He would give lectures on Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada also listened to some of his lectures. And Prabhupada said, he has the full blessings of Brihaspati. Brihaspati is a guru of the demigods. Uddhava was also a disciple of Brihaspati. And so it means he was very intelligent. So Prabhupada appreciated that he had this power by the grace of that blessings from Brihaspati. <laughs> Similarly, we see. Students, when they're studying, they're going for exams, they often pray to Saraswati to bless them, to get blessings for Mother Saraswati, help them to pass their exam. There was a great pundit, Digvijay, uh, who came to Navadvip to, to challenge all the pundits. Keshava Kashmiri, yeah? Keshava Kashmiri, yeah. He was Digvijay, he had 
Chant gone everywhere, defeated people in debate, and he came to Navadweep to challenge the pundits in Navadweep. And he got this blessing because he was a great devotee of Mother Saraswati. But when he came to Navadweep, because Navadweep was very important 500 years ago, it was the, the center of learning. It was like, you know, like Oxford or Harvard, you know, some famous university in the West. So Navadweep was the center, the, the, the place to, to study in India 500 years ago. And all the great pundits were there. So, Keshava Kashmiri sent the challenge and the pundits there in Navadweep, they were all afraid. And they said, oh, 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 I have to go, I have to go to my village, I have to go to my home, there's some problem, I, I'm not able to stay, I'm sorry, I won't be able to debate with you, you know, I have to go home, I have some urgent business in my village. They were just making excuse to avoid meeting him because they were afraid they would be defeated by him. So at this time Lord Chaitanya was known as Nimai Pandit. At this time he was a young man and he was just a teenage boy and he had opened his own school and he was teaching. Nimai Pandit used to teach Nyaya, logic, and he was a very good teacher. And he used to go and he used to go around Navadweep and debate and challenge devotees to defeat to debate with him. And he would defeat them. And devotees would run away if they saw him coming. They didn't want to meet him because they knew he would defeat them in argument. So Nimai Pandit, he was sitting on the bank of the Ganges one day with all the students and he was giving class to them. And at that time Keshava Kashmiri came with all of his followers. And he was coming, it was a big procession, he was riding on an elephant and there were many people all with him, and they were all singing his glories, that he's a great, the, the greatest pundit and he's come to, to challenge anybody. So they came where Nimai Pandit was sitting there and somehow Keshava Kashmiri, he had heard about Nimai Pandit. And so uh, he asked Nimai Pandit that you're a great scholar, why don't you compose, oh, maybe it was Nimai Pandit asked Keshava Kashmiri. Keshava Kashmiri said, oh yeah, you're a great scholar, please compose some poetry in praise of Mother Ganga. And 
So Keshava Kashmiri immediately began to recite poetry and spontaneously in his mind he was composing verses glorifying Mother Ganga and he composed maybe 100 verses all glorifying Mother Ganga. So Lord Chaitanya Nimai Pandit was sitting there listening and after he heard him recite all these verses, Nimai Pandit said to him, he said, Oh, very good. You, you have composed so many verses, but there's some faults in some of the verses. Kindly explain why these faults are there. And Keshava Kashmiri said, What? My poetry, there's no faults in my poetry. And then Nimai Pandit quoted one verse one which he had composed. Lord Chaitanya not only had memorized the verses which Keshava Kashmiri was speaking, but he'd also analyzed them and found faults in the grammar. Lord Chaitanya had this, because he's the Supreme Lord, he had the, the ability, he could hear, he remembered everything. And so Lord Chaitanya quoted this one verse and then went on to explain some of the faults in the verse. So Keshava Kashmiri was really amazed that he was thinking, you know, it's perfect, no fault in my poetry, but Nimai Pandit showed, no, there's faults. Look, you made this mistake, you did this, you did that, this is wrong, this is wrong. So Lord Chaitanya's students, they were going, ah, ha, 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 ha. they were laughing, you know, they were saying, ah, ha, he, be, he defeated you, you're defeated. But Lord Chaitanya said, no, no, don't laugh. He's a great scholar. He's a very great scholar. And so that night Keshava Kashmiri went home and he offered his prayers to Mother Saraswati and asked her, he said, have I committed some offense against you that you didn't, you allowed me to be defeated like this? What did I do wrong? I didn't please you? Mother Saraswati spoke to him and said, no, you should understand that person who defeated you today, he is my Lord and Master. He is the Supreme Lord of all. You should go and surrender to his Lord's feet. 
So Keshava Kashmir, he was always thinking Mother Saraswati was the supreme and he was just simply worshipping Mother Saraswati and depending on her blessings. But by the grace of this meeting with Lord Chaitanya, he was, he was taught what is the correct understanding and he surrendered to Lord Chaitanya and he went on to become a very good Vaishnava. Somehow he took initiation in another Sampradaya. But still a Vaishnava. So the point is, you know, there's so many different demigods, different beings, and ultimately they're, they're all under the control of the Supreme Lord. So you can worship all of these different gods and all of these different personalities who control all the different elements of the material nature. There's something like 33 crore demigods controlling the material world. We want to get free of the material body. We have to give up all of these different things. You have to satisfy and please all of these different personalities. But if we simply worship Lord Krishna, then you're freed from all other, all of these duties. We just simply worship the one Supreme Lord and then all the other gods, all the other duties, everything else is taken care of. And we don't have to worry about all of these other things. One who surrenders to Krishna, one who satisfies Krishna, the Supreme Lord, then he's free from all of these other responsibilities which are there in the material world. So this section, this chapter is describing Varnashram, Varnashram material is in the material world, but devotional service is transcendent. One who worships Krishna, one who worships the Supreme Lord, then he gets the blessings of all of these other demigods. Okay, any question? Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Bhorte Manandi.